Have you ever been betrayed? You're a fucking bastard, he spat, betrayal burning. For years I'd built a life, believing in love and loyalty. My spouse, my heart, yet whispers of deceit crept in. Unseen cracks widened, eroding what I thought unbreakable. The truth hit like a storm, unexpected, unforgiving. It was all a lie, echoed in my mind, a mantra of despair. In the rubble of trust, I stood, lost, seeking answers. This is my story. Enjoy watching. Tom caught sight of John entering the bar and a smile spread across his face as he greeted his long-lost friend. Despite the early hour and the bar's emptiness, Tom had been hoping that John would show up. It had been weeks since they had last spent time together, as John had been preoccupied with personal matters and had become unreachable. Tom had tried reaching out through calls and emails, but to no avail. He had even attempted to visit John at his home and office, but it seemed that John was always absent. Tom held on to the hope that John's problems had been resolved, but the anger etched on John's face shattered that optimism. Tom rose from his seat to offer a handshake, only to be abruptly knocked to the ground by a powerful punch to the jaw. As Tom's head collided with a nearby table, he couldn't help but exclaim in disbelief, What the hell? A bloody tooth flew from his mouth as he spoke. Standing over him, John prepared to strike again, his rage palpable. You're a despicable bastard, you knew, John seethed. You and your wife found amusement in mocking my trust all this time. I bet you both had a great laugh. The throbbing pain in his jaw and the numbing sensation, likely from a concussion, made it difficult for Tom to fully comprehend what his friend was saying. Everything seemed nonsensical to him. The only word that escaped Tom's lips was a bewildered, What? John unleashed a flurry of blows upon Tom's ribs and legs, his voice filled with fury. I'm sure it was a damn good time for you to hang out with me just so she could cheat on me, John shouted. Hey, buddy, let's go to my father-in-law's cabin for the weekend. Hey, buddy, Emily got us tickets to that concert you've been dying to see, only three hours away, all just excuses to get me out of the house and away from this place so she could have her way with that scumbag. I should have seen this coming, but I never expected you to betray me like this. I have no clue what I did to earn such hatred from you, to aid her in cheating on me. But you're not just a terrible person, you're also a lousy friend. By this point in time, a number of patrons at the bar had seized hold of John and commenced pulling him back. Tom gazed at his friend, taken aback by the blows and perplexed by his friend's actions and words. With limited comprehension of what had transpired, the bartender promptly contacted the police upon the initiation of the first punch. Fortunately, a patrol car happened to be in close proximity, although the arrival of the ambulance took considerably longer. Consequently, while John was apprehended and placed inside the patrol car, Tom struggled to rise with the assistance of some unfamiliar individuals. The emergency medical technicians expeditiously evaluated Tom's condition and secured him onto a stretcher, firmly fastening him for transportation to the emergency room. Tom lost consciousness even before the ambulance departed from the parking lot. Enveloped by the soothing wail of the siren, it all appeared to him as a brief, nightmarish reverie. When he gradually opened his eyes and regained awareness, he swiftly discerned that he was situated within a hospital. He observed vehicles outside and an ordinary standard hospital room adorned with medical apparatus and a two-decade-old television. It was not a figment of his imagination. It was reality. As Tom commenced regaining consciousness, his wife Emily entered the room with tears streaming down her face. I am deeply sorry, my love. I desired to be present when you awakened, but I departed to inform your parents and assure them of your well-being. How are you feeling? Tom propped himself up slightly on the bed and endeavored to gather his thoughts regarding the events that had unfolded when Emily settled down beside him and clasped his hand. The swelling had subsided to some extent due to rest and medication, allowing his words to be comprehensible. I am uncertain of what transpired. I have never witnessed him behave in such a manner before. He mentioned something about Amanda being unfaithful to him and insinuated that we were aiding her, asserting that we were responsible for this. His words lacked coherence. Emily's tears continued to cascade as Tom continued speaking. Perhaps I misheard. 
but it appeared as though he believed that our sole purpose in undertaking these outings was to facilitate Amanda's infidelity. It is utterly preposterous. Why would he entertain such an absurd notion? As Tom fell silent for a moment, he directed his gaze towards Emily. Lowering her head, she whispered apologetically, I'm not sure what you're apologizing for. He hit me, and he had this ludicrous notion that we were aiding her in cheating. It sounds absurd. Why would he believe that we would assist her in such a harmful act? What kind of awful individuals could perpetrate such actions against someone they care about? Tom regarded Emily as she lifted her head. There was something peculiar about her demeanor. Perhaps he was overthinking, but her behavior seemed oddly suspicious, especially considering her usual outspokenness, particularly regarding relationships with close friends. Just as he was about to inquire about her demeanor, the doctor entered and informed them that his jaw was not broken or dislocated, only bruised. Although Tom suffered from a headache, he opted to feign wellness to expedite their discharge. As they journeyed home, both Tom and Emily remained silent, eschewing music and conversation. Tom sought answers, yet upon arriving home, exhaustion overwhelmed him, and he promptly fell asleep after changing clothes. Emily nestled beside him, embracing him tightly. Upon descending the stairs after a shower, Tom found Emily lost in thought at the kitchen table. Despite his lingering pain, his mind was clearer. As he joined her, Emily acknowledged his presence and inquired about his well-being. I'm okay. I have a headache and everything hurts. A day of rest and I'll be fine. I still can't comprehend what prompted John to act so irrationally. Taking a sip of his coffee, Tom resumed. Tom gazed at his wife intently as she spoke, noticing a calculated and cautious response. However, there was an underlying sadness in her demeanor, which seemed out of place considering her typically vibrant personality. He surmised that perhaps the assault had deeply affected her, causing her to withdraw. Reaching out, he gently clasped her hands in his own, assuring her, Don't worry, my love. I am unharmed. I have regained my composure. As her tears streamed down, their embrace conveyed the unspoken words, I love you. They both decided to take the day off work and remained at home, seeking solace in each other's presence. Yet Tom couldn't shake the feeling that something beyond physical pain was troubling him. None of it made any sense. The sudden and baseless accusation from John, implicating him and Emily in Amanda's alleged infidelity, left Emily visibly shaken and hesitant in her responses. Tom contemplated pressing her further about her conversation with Amanda, but seeing her on the verge of tears, he realized that now was not the appropriate time for confrontation. Despite being in the same space, they seemed to maintain a certain distance between them. Tom sat in the backyard, observing the swaying trees and grass, pondering the need to understand the motive behind John's attack. Their long-standing friendship had never witnessed such an outburst from John without a valid cause. Reflecting on his wife's words, Tom struggled to recall her ever mentioning that John's wife had not cheated on him and had only expressed remorse for the unwarranted assault on Tom. We must hear John's side of the story, he concluded. The best way to do so is by speaking to John himself. However, he acknowledged the potential risk of another attack from John. It appeared to be the most straightforward approach to establish a fundamental comprehension of the situation. Subsequently, Tom will engage in a conversation with Emily to discuss their respective roles in the events and what led John to believe that Emily and Tom were betraying him. Emily informed Tom that she would briefly stop by her workplace to retrieve her laptop since she would be at home for the remainder of the week and did not want to fall behind her schedule. After her departure, Tom made the decision to take a risk and visit John. While en route to John's house, Tom attempted to call him but was unsuccessful. Tom hoped that John had already been released from prison, so he took a taxi to John's residence. If Tom is fortunate, John will be present so they can ascertain the cause of this predicament and return to normalcy. Upon reaching the entrance of John's house, Tom's stomach sank when he noticed Emily's car parked in the driveway. Instead of ringing the front doorbell, Tom proceeded to the back of the house until he was near the open window adjacent to the kitchen. He halted when he overheard Emily conversing with Amanda. Emily was no longer silent. She was evidently furious. John overheard me discussing plans for a date and having your support. He overheard a conversation that was clearly not intended for him. 
So how does that justify his attack on Tom? John heard me mention that you would provide cover for me and that both Tom and John would be occupied, allowing me to go out without arousing John's suspicions. He must have interpreted this as Tom being aware of the situation. I would have warned you if I had known. However, it was only when Tom was attacked that I realized John was aware. John is extremely enraged. He even utilized his phone call from prison to express his intense hatred towards me and his preference to rot in prison rather than continue living with me, along with numerous other angry and hurtful words that only I could conjure. Emily desired to empathize with her friend, but it was Amanda who left John. Emily's foolishness in assisting Amanda has already caused significant issues in her own marriage, and the situation could worsen when Tom discovers that she was aware of the wrongdoing in helping a cheater. However, Emily and Amanda were close friends, and Emily hoped that their relationship would remain casual and not affect her marriage to John. Unfortunately, Emily's support ended up causing the worst outcome. Now, Emily will have to face the consequences in her own marriage because of Amanda's inability to remain faithful. I understand that you have your own problems, but so do I. Once Tom learns about what happened, my marriage will be in serious jeopardy. Why would my marriage be at risk? I didn't engage in any inappropriate behavior. It was Tom and John who had the opportunity to have fun. Tom knows that you never cheated on him. If necessary, I will assure him that you have always been faithful. Of course, Tom couldn't see it, but he could sense from Emily's tone of voice that she had closed her eyes and was rubbing her forehead as she spoke. You truly don't comprehend the gravity of the situation. I lied to him. I aided you in deceiving his best friend all because of me. His best friend ended up attacking him. Do you honestly believe he will trust a single word I say? And as for your assistance, you are the one person involved in this who he will despise even more than me. So do you think he will listen to everything you say and believe a known liar? But you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't cheat. He needs to know this. It doesn't matter. I have no clue how to rectify this. And if I don't find a solution before Tom finds out, my marriage will likely end up like yours did. I can't believe what a fool I was for helping you. If I lose my marriage, I will never speak to you again. But you have always been a devoted wife. He knows how much you love him. Yeah, right. I'm such a devoted wife that my support for my promiscuous friend resulted in my husband being assaulted by his best friend. You truly don't grasp the situation. What a fool you are. Do you think he will trust me now? At best, it will take years for him to regain trust in me. Tom had heard enough and calmly returned to the street. Tom's resilient demeanor enabled him to maintain composure and concentrate on the task at hand. While waiting for a taxi, he realized the need to rectify the situation. However, he understood that gathering all the necessary information was crucial. It was time to visit a friend to discuss the matter. The sergeant and detectives were beyond perplexed when Tom expressed his intention to post bail, but years of encountering peculiar incidents in their line of work had desensitized them. They chuckled at John's reaction when Tom intervened and openly laughed when Tom instructed John to remain silent until instructed otherwise. Confused, John followed Tom and quietly entered the car. After providing the driver with the address, they sat in silence until they reached the crime scene. The same bartender was on duty, visibly anxious and apprehensive about potential trouble. Tom swiftly reassured him, requesting a bottle of Glen Morangi Signet, two glasses and privacy. As they settled into a corner booth, Tom poured a generous amount into both glasses and slid one towards John. They both raised their glasses and exchanged a sarcastic toast to their first drink. Tom gazed at his friend. I had no knowledge of this setup. I simply wanted to spend time with you and enjoy ourselves. They manipulated our friendship against you. They were aware that I would never consent to this, so they proceeded with their deceitful plan without involving me. John scrutinized his friend attentively. They had known each other for so long that he could always discern when Tom was speaking nonsense. From the expression on Tom's face, it was evident that he was being sincere this time. Once the initial anger subsided and John had calmed down in prison, he was able to think rationally, or at least reasonably, about what Tom had disclosed. She broke my heart, and your wife aided her? I gave our marriage everything I had, and it was all in vain because she chose to pursue an affair with some stranger. 
Tom refilled their glasses and simply listened as John vented his frustration and anger about his failed marriage. Once the whiskey had dulled John's emotions and facilitated a calm discussion of the incident, he was able to extend an apology for his violent outburst. I should have spoken with you first, but I couldn't restrain myself. Discovering that my marriage and friendship were unraveling left me feeling utterly powerless. As much as it pained me to learn of her infidelity, the notion of betrayal from you was even more devastating. Cheating was already a betrayal, but the idea of you betraying me as well was a deeper wound. I'm truly sorry, he confessed, seeking absolution. Tom, with a wry smile, took a sip of his whiskey before responding, It's all right. I probably deserved it for having relations with your sister during the Christmas holidays. Curious, he inquired, How did you discover her infidelity? John shook his head in disbelief, remarking, It was rather foolish of me. A few weeks ago I sensed something amiss in my marriage and began to distance myself. Eventually I concluded that she must be having an affair, so I contemplated hiring a private investigator. However, while I was at work, my phone began streaming video and audio from the front porch's ring camera. It captured Amanda picking up an Amazon package while discussing rendezvous arrangements with someone on the phone. She mentioned you and Emily, implying your complicity in her deceit. It seemed as though you were actively involved rather than unaware bystanders. Tom stared at John incredulously, grappling with the weight of his revelation. Mary Egg is deceased because your wife couldn't exercise discretion and overlooked the camera. So Emily cheated too? John pondered. Reflecting on this, Tom remarked, I hadn't considered it, but it's plausible that she engaged in similar behavior to cover for my wife. Contemplating the situation further, he added, In fact, I'm nearly convinced that Emily did not cheat. I overheard their conversation before they picked you up, and it convinced me that she wasn't involved in any indiscretion. Perplexed, John questioned, If she didn't cheat, why pursue a divorce? Perhaps it would be easier to forgive her if she had been unfaithful with someone else. Tom's response was solemn. The issue lies not in betrayal, but in trust. Not only has she repeatedly deceived me about her actions and your wife, but she has utilized our friendship to conceal it in the most cunning and malicious manner, making me an active participant in the deceit. How can I continue to be married to her if I can no longer trust her and my closest friend despises her? Trust can potentially be rebuilt. I have lost all faith in my wife. However, Emily genuinely loves you. Are you certain that this is the end? I believe so. Trust that is solidified over time is not stronger but rather weaker. People may forgive, but they never forget. I refuse to spend the remainder of my life hoping that this will eventually fade into a distant memory. She was fully aware of her actions, and there is nothing she could say to rectify the situation. It is time for me to depart and start anew. John harbored envy towards his friend. Despite all of this, do you think you will be able to have an amicable divorce and maintain a good relationship with each other? I will attempt to find a suitable job for Amanda based on her skills and pay less child support by seeking out a Mexican brothel. I am amazed by your ability to perceive life as it truly is. You determine your own path and simply live your life. Tom chuckled. It felt as though his world was crumbling, but he understood that in the long run he would be fine. He returned home and conversed with Emily. However, since she already knew what was coming, the process would likely be relatively smooth. She wept and pleaded for counseling, but she comprehended that he would be unable to reconcile with her actions. It was out of character for her, and she acknowledged that it was time for him to embark on a new journey and view his life with fresh perspective as the chapter in his marriage to Emily had come to a close. Please subscribe to our channel to ensure that your partner does not betray you. Additionally, feel free to listen to the next story as it surpasses the current one in every aspect. If you are under the age of 18, it is strongly advised that you refrain from listening to the following story.